When we're discussing economic development, there are three brackets that countries are placed into um, concerning their econ economic development in the world. Um, first and foremost, you have developed countries. Um, when you think of developed countries, I want you to think of an established economy, a government system, and they can offer items that can trade in the free world market. Okay, They have production. Okay. Developed regions would be the United States, Canada, Western, Western Europe, Australia, and Japan. Um, you see city here. Okay, NASDAQ dealing with the stock market. They have hospitals, surgeons, advanced technology. Um, when we talk about developing countries, okay, these are going to be countries that are finding a sense of their economy. They're attempting to offer, you know, some type of production or items that can go into world trade. Um, and so if you take a look, there are regions like Russia, Eastern Europe, uh, countries in Africa and in South America. Please keep in mind that if you look closely, a lot of these countries were either communist or were under imperialism with other nations. Okay, Because if you're looking at Russia and Eastern Europe, remember they're a little bit behind in society because um, they you know, we're practicing communism for an extensive amount of time where the U.S. and Western Europe had a capitalist society for decades. Um, and, you know, sometimes they have third world tendencies, as you can look and see right here, um, as well as right here with Africa and here as well, okay? Um, when we talk about the least developed countries, these are going to be countries that are trying to find... Um, a place or find a structure for their economy. They're just trying to bring their country up to modern developed nations. They're trying to even just get in the competition. Um, so when you look at Africa, you can see that a lot of the countries that are least developed are areas that were under imperialism with the British um, and other European nations. Um, they're also nations that are not as willing to let go of their traditional um, concepts in their nation and adapt to the modernization and secularization of the world. And that's economic development. Moving on, um, when we discuss social struggles, um, one struggle that we're, we're going to have socially is human rights. And you can summarize the Helsinki Accords as however you would like, but what it is is it's discussing people deserving the basic rights without distinction of any kind. So when you talk about distinction, you have to think about being recognized for something like your race, color, sex, language, social origin, property, birth, or other status. Um, so this is talking about you know getting rid of concepts like torture, slavery, killing, Others, um, human rights cannot be abused. All people deserve basic rights, and this is on a international scale. Um, and the Helsinki Accords w were held in 1975, and this was to agree um, what levels we needed to have for human rights. Okay. Um, global challenges. Um, when we're talking about global challenges, the biggest concern that we have is poverty. Okay. Um, poverty is a major problem in many countries. Um, more than 20% of the world's people live on less than a dollar a day. Um, they don't have access to basic services such as education and health care. Um, and poverty can have many causes. Um, it can include, you know, the lack of natural resources, um, wars, poor government planning, and rapid population growth. If you have a large growth of population, but you don't have the food or the means to feed those individuals, then you're going to have poverty, okay? Um, and one term that you need to be familiar with, and you probably want to make note of it, is famine. That's F-A-M-I-N-E. Um, and it's when we have an extreme shortage of food, um, and if you have a large population but a shortage of food, people are going to go hungry. Um, we even have uh, poverty in the wealthiest nations in the world. The United States has poverty. Um, but a lot of times we use foreign aid. Other nations can help um, countries that are suffering from a large amount of poverty. 
Um, another thing is disease, okay? Um, disease is, spreads rapidly because people move from place to place. Like an example is that when we talk about people flying internationally, um, when the SARS outbreak occurred in China, it spread to Asia, Europe, and the Americas because people were traveling back and forth and carrying um, SARS, okay? And many diseases have their largest impact on local and regional levels, but globalization, traveling to and fro, has made controlling disease a challenge for the entire world. Um, yeah, so that's, you know... Um, and also we have an epidemic, which should be on your note sheet, but it talks about the outbreak of contagious disease that spreads quickly and affects many people. And a, a great example of that is HIV and AIDS. Um, it is an epidemic in Africa. Um, it's a, a very big problem in, the, in America as well. But just remember that when we talk about epidemics, it's, a lar it's on a large scale and it spreads quickly and affects many people. When we talk about natural disasters, um, which natural disasters can be hurricanes, floods, earthquakes, tsunamis, like we've had tsunamis in Sri Lanka, we've had a hurricane um, not too long ago in 2005, we had um, Hurricane Katrina. Um, so they affect many areas of the world, um, often causing deaths and destroying homes and businesses. Um, Let's see, 2004, we had a tsunami that, you know, destroyed a large area of Southeast Asia, Sri Lanka, um, killing 20, or 225,000 people. Um, now, the one fortunate thing about natural disasters is that individuals and the government and humanitarian organizations provide aid to regions suffering from natural disasters, okay? Um, like we had the earthquake in Haiti. Mm, there's been one in Japan, and remember that th with that earthquake, there was like a tsunami, so it washed water up on the land and pulled people out into the ocean, and then similar things have happened in India. Um, well, here's the result, though. When you have people who have had a, a traumatic event occur, some people choose to move in search of better opportunities, okay? Um, so... People, refugees come from natural disasters or violence. So people who flee violence in their home country to seek safety in other nations, okay? That's a refugee. Um, and when we talk about foreign aid, foreign aid comes into play with natural disasters because other countries might help that country rebuild, give them money and supplies to help their people and rebuild their nation. Also, we will have um, urbanization will rise. Um, with, you know, society changing, and that's one key social challenge, is that we're going to migrate to cities. People are not going to want to live in rural areas anymore, but they're going to want to migrate and, and move to cities. And that's cities offer you jobs. And those are global challenges. Um, we have ethnic and religious conflict in the world. So when we are talking about ethnic and religious conflict, you're going to have tribes, religious groups that aren't necessarily going to get along or have the same viewpoints. Um, and I'm going to give you, I'm going to talk to you about Darfur and Rwanda and mention a little bit about Uganda. In Rwanda, you have the Hutu and the Tutsi people that are fighting. Um, they're going to beef and uh, one million people are going to be killed in Rwanda. Um, there will be a food shortage and disease um, will kill thousands of people. And what will happen, though, is that, like I said, foreign aid will come into play, and UN troops and the French will keep a ceasefire until they can form a new government in Rwanda. Um, if you look in here, you can see the young men. Um, and those are skulls from people who have been killed. Now, when we talk about Darfur, first of all, it's located in the Sudan, okay, um, in Africa. And when we talk about it, um, it happened, pardon me, it happened in the early 2000s. Um, the Arab militia are going to be supported by the government, but what they will do is loot and kill African villagers. Um, and this will cause a large amount of refugees to flee to refugee camps. 
Um, remember that they're trying to escape violence. Um, the big thing about the Sudan is that many children will be orphaned. They'll lose their parents. Um, there's a lot of raping and killing that goes on, not just looting, um, in the Sudan. Um, and I definitely encourage you guys to research all of these um, issues and conflicts in the world. Um, and then you have the strife in Uganda, which has led to... Um, Coney, Joseph Coney, um, and fighting against Joseph Coney, and the Invisible Children movement. Um, so that's ethnic and religious conflict. Terrorism, and I'm going to end with terrorism because we're going to pick up in class with this, but I would like for you to at least write the definition down. Terrorism is the use of violence and intimidation for political gain. Um, and I know that you can probably tell me a million instances of terrorism because we terrorism isn't something that's new from 2001 on with the September 11th attacks. T terrorism runs back hundreds of years. Um, when we talked about the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand, that was a terrorist group called the Black Hand that wanted to eliminate him to ultimately carry out a new government system or push away from Austria-Hungary for their personal political gain. Um, I will pick up with all of this tomorrow. Um, make sure that you're taking notes from the prez, uh, from the Prezi. You can stop, pause, rewind, fast forward, do whatever you need to do. I'm looking forward to seeing you guys tomorrow, and I hope you have a great evening. And I apologize for the late video. I had two meetings.